So we can see it's all plastic wrapped and taped. So we're gonna have to flip it over here, put this tape away. We can see the bottom and there are four squishy rubber feet and some venting here and it's all metal, so. All right, now we can pull off the plastic wrap. We got the cover, which is kind of like a red tint, very nice. And there's a plastic protector around it. It just peels off. All right, more plastic baggies. And this should just slide up. Okay, sure enough it does. And actually inside this foam, there's a little piece you gotta uncover and we can see our a bill plate in there. But yeah, this is what the bill plate looks like. It's got like a sanded kind of finish, so hopefully sticks well. And we do have taper on the top to drain the resin better. Yeah, it looks pretty good, all metal. First thing I'm really noticing, and we'll go over all the details here in a little bit, but there's a really large screen, and that's actually a six inch touchscreen LCD. So yeah, very cool. All right, so let's see what we got here. So it looks like we got a baggie of stuff, including the manual, which is very nice looking. Creality usually makes great manuals. So here we have all the parameters, if you guys can see that maybe. And instructions on how to get started here. Should be able to figure this out pretty quick. All right, so it looks like we've got more stuff in this bag. We get a large spatula. It's not very sharpened, so it's more dull. But yeah, this is to scrape off the models off of the build plate. Make sure you don't use this on the tub itself in the printer, because that's not what it's for. Sometimes they include a plastic one that, you know, you can scrape the tub out but yeah they do give you this brush here to clean out the models I guess and maybe clean out the tub not my favorite thing because these things usually shed and they fall all over the place because they're kind of cheap but in any case I guess it's kind of nice to have one some filters to strain your resin so you don't really need this when you're pouring a new bottle into the printer but you will need this whenever you're trying to save your unused resin back into the bottle you use this to you know make sure nothing goes into the bottle we also get some allen keys or hex wrenches three pieces and a usb thumb drive which should have our slicer software in there and maybe some test models all right so let's see what else we got blank envelope that's sealed very interesting okay so we have extra vat material so this is the screen well, let's go ahead and pull this off that goes here on the tub you guys probably can see there's a screen and these are extra pieces that whenever you wear these out you can change them and it's actually not too hard there's just a bunch of bolts and then their bracket pulls off and then you take off the old screen put the new one in and then tighten it back up and trim the edges and you're good to go so yeah it's really cool that they include actually three replacements so you got four total with the one that's in there so this should give you a long life of printing with these extra vat films all right well we also get a lot more filters 3m branded which is interesting and these look like they're more bigger and more heavy duty so yeah so these are the ones that are original and then we got the heavy duty large ones so well, it looks like we also get another extra film for the vat. So I'm not sure if these are extras that we have here, including the filters and the envelope of vats as part of the Creality or maybe the seller. And here we have the power cord and it's US type and it's actually a decent link. So that's nice to see. All right, and that's everything for all the accessories. All right, so let's take a closer look at the printer here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the vat here, the tub back out. And so it is all metal and appears to be aluminum, good quality. We got markings here, you guys can see, little steps of volume measurement. And then the manual tells you what each step represents. We got two knobs with bolts, and that's how you tighten it. And the film, which is stretched very nicely, you can play music on it, so yeah. So you guys saw me just set it down flat like that. Don't do that because you're gonna accumulate dirt on it. What just happened, because I didn't realize there's no little feet here that hold it up. So the film does touch straight to the bottom. But yeah, I would have liked to see maybe some feet. So, you know, when you do pull it out and stand it down when you do have resin in it, you know, you're not actually touching the film, but it's not a big deal. You know, you could just set this down on a towel or a napkin. So, all right, so let's see the printer itself a little closer. So first things first, guys, look at this humongous touchscreen display here very nice and there is a protector let's go ahead and take it off yeah that's huge you can see my finger here and the screen so very nice so we do have two usb ports a normal one and then a printer type i think it's type a is what it's called i'm we'll going to this side we can see we just have venting to the other side also just venting and on the back it gets a little more interesting so we have the manufacturing label there you guys can see that all the information 
venting here in the middle. And what's interesting is we have the power socket here that is fused with an on and off switch in the back. So it looks like that the power supply is inside the printer instead of externally. So well, that's kind of interesting. On the top, we can see the main LCD screen and you need a peel protector here also. So this is a 2K monochrome LCD panel, which is awesome. And no resin printer these days should be any different because we do have a very long life and also very fast printing speeds from about one to four seconds a layer. So going up, we have the Z axis motor with the coupler and the lead screw going up, which is connected to this arm and it is all aluminum metal. And then we have the knob here that tightens our bed. Let's go ahead and install that. Well, I guess that won't fit. Well, actually, we can go ahead and raise this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But yeah, we got a linear rail, if you guys can see that. And that's what the Z-axis rides on, the linear bearings. And we got a brass bushing here for the elite screw. So yeah, our build plate will simply just slide right in here, just like that. And then we can tighten it. And that secures it. And the build volume that we have for this printer is 127 millimeters wide, 80 millimeters deep, and 160 millimeters tall. Yeah, pretty standard size for a 2K LCD screen. So on the inside there, you guys can see but there's an optical sensor that stops it from going all the way up. The whole box frame of the Z-axis is all metal. And as you guys can see, it's all enclosed. So yeah, very strong and durable construction. Also some touches here is we have little brackets that hold the tub in place when you put it in. And then we have a little fan here with a carbon filter that helps with the fumes. Yeah, I think for the next part, we need to go ahead and plug in the cord. And that simply goes back here. And the switch here is where we're gonna power it on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. And it powers on. Took a little bit there to show up, but yeah, look at that animation, guys. That's interesting. All right, so yeah, you guys can see that's a very large screen and it might be too bright. Yeah, I've darkened the camera, but it probably is still bright. But in any case, we can see here the Creality logo. It says file and settings. So the file is gonna read our USB drive on the side. And then let's go ahead and click settings. So here we can see we have quite a few options. We got parameter settings, clean function, Z axis movements, system settings, device binding, and service. All right, so I brought you guys in a little closer. Maybe we can see that. So let's click on the first thing here, which is parameter settings. So here we can adjust what the printer does. And it looks like we have a lot more adjustment than normal here. So we got bottom exposure time set at 40 seconds, light delay, which is four seconds, exposure time, three seconds, bottom a lifting distance, six millimeters. Millimeters. And then we got the motor speed, which is one millimeter a second. So it's kind of cool that you can adjust all that. Let's see if we click on it. Okay, so you just literally choose it here from the menu. So but yeah, that's cool. All right, let's click confirm. So here we have a clean setting, which is also a good setting to check, make sure your UV rays are working. So let's click on that. And it does come on. I don't know if you guys can see, but yeah, the whole screen just is on. And this is actually used to clean the vat whenever you're done printing and you got a little bit left over in there. You can turn this on and it'll solidify whatever's in there. And it's easier to peel it off and clean it. So, But also we could use this to check, make sure it works. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And I don't know if you guys can hear, but when I did turn the clean on, the fans came on. So it was pretty quiet until now. And I'll bring my microphone in. does have a little bit of noise. It's not anything bad, but it's definitely not quiet either. So, and I would even say that maybe on the latter side for a resin printer. All right, so we got Z-axis movement. Okay, so here we have leveling and out of home. And we'll come back to this. System settings, so we can change our language. And it looks like we only have two languages, English or Chinese looks like. Refresh, I don't wanna click that. I think that just resets everything. And then we have our Wi-Fi settings here. So if you wanna to connect to your Wi-Fi, you can. And then you can, you know, control the printer from your phone or whatnot else. So here we have device binding and this pulls up a QR code and this has something to do with that Wi-Fi. So if you have the right app, you can connect your phone to the printer and then just send files to the printer from your phone. So. And here we have the service section where you can contact the company. All right, so yeah, pretty simple and intuitive menu. And obviously you'll click here once you have something in the USB port, but it does look like we already have something in there as a test file, so that's interesting. And something else that's interesting is the file names. I've never seen that before. It's a CXDLP, so that looks like it's unique to this printer. All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and do the leveling. So this part is actually much simpler than it seems. We are gonna need our Allen wrenches. 
the largest one, which we're gonna have to loosen four bolts here on this build plate. I'll just go ahead and show you guys a little closer, but yeah, there's four bolts that we gotta loosen, two on each side, and once we do that, we can see the whole bracket just moves around. And the whole point of this, we can go ahead and set it back in, tighten it up, and you guys can see our whole build plate moves around now. So the point of this is to hold the Z-axis down and then the build plate here will sit flat. But before you let it down on the screen, you need some kind of little buffer like a piece of paper. So this manual is actually perfect. It's pretty thin. So I'm just gonna use it, set it in between. And then we're gonna go to settings, Z-axis movement and click on leveling. So now we can see the Z-axis now is moving up kind of slow. And I'm guessing it's going to the sensor up there. Then once it gets there, it'll come back down, so. All right, so after eternity, it's finally on the bottom now. And we should start. Yeah, we did compress a little bit. It looks like it's just about perfect here. And that's where it stopped. So we still have movement in the plate, but it is sitting completely flat. So what you want to do next is put two fingers around the plate on both sides and tighten up the four bolts on the side. So we're gonna start from one here and then we're gonna go to the other on the opposite side to the front and then back to the front on here. But yeah, you definitely wanna hold the plate down as you're tightening it, that way it's nice and flat. But don't push too hard down because you know we do have the screen down there. You just wanna make sure it's flat. So once you've got everything nice and flat, you can snug up these bolts, not too tight. And that's it, that should be our leveling. So our paper is still under there and it's, you know, had some friction, but we should be able to pull it out pretty easy. You guys can see that, so. But yeah, we should have a very nice level build plate to the screen. So let's go back. Well, actually, before we do that, we do need to go up. So let's go to out of home. And that's gonna raise it all the way to the top, which is that's where the home is. And it's gonna get it out of the way so we can install our vat or the tub back on the printer. Yeah, I definitely wish that the up and down motion was faster. I don't know why it's so slow. And maybe actually guys, let's see, let's stop that. I'm just kind of curious. What if we go to the parameter settings and we set the motor speed to, let's say all the way to 10 out of curiosity. Oh, it doesn't go to 10, just goes to nine. Okay, confirm it. I wonder if that actually speeds up this process here. So out of home and sure enough, well, wow, that's too fast. Yeah, it's boogieing all like crazy now. All right, so yeah, if you want it to go faster, you can adjust that, but make sure you change that back before you start printing. Well, you know what? I'm gonna set it to two millimeters because a second, because one was just way too slow. I'll confirm that. All right, so making sure that the film is clean and your display here is clean, we can go ahead and set this back in there and tighten it back up. So yeah, as simple as that, we're pretty much ready to print. And as you can see that it's not very hard to get started. 